Hey guys, Eerie is here and welcome along to another video. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you should be well aware by now that at last night's Sony PlayStation Showcase event, Gran Turismo 7's release date was finally revealed, and it's going to be coming to PS4 and PS5 in March 2022. Now, while it's great to finally have a release date for this game after it being delayed due to COVID and quite a long time since Gran Turismo Sport was released, four years ago to be exact, there was plenty more on show and there's plenty of things hidden in that trailer about the new features and content that we can expect to see in the new game. And in this video, we're gonna go through the trailer, pull out all the new things that I think we can expect and then list my top five things that I am most excited about Gran Turismo 7. But before we jump into the trailer that's just on screen now, if you are new around here, this channel is all about my sim racing journey, tracking all the highs and the lows along the way. So if you're into that and you want to see plenty more of Gran Turismo Sport and Gran Turismo 7 content when it finally arrives, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Right then, with that all out the way, let's have a look at what the trailer has to offer. It's about three minutes and keep up with me here because there's quite a lot to cover so let's go first point bravo to polyphony digital the music is just great for this absolutely brilliant this for me is where they showed us the day night transition as the night turns to day over the porsche which is going to be the poster car for this a homage to older intros there with the leaves blowing across the track at Trial Mountain as well. Graphics looks absolutely incredible. As does that, the Tom's Castrol Supra. I spent many a hour in that car as a kid. Then just as usual pistons that we see in every intro. And then the latest iteration of Gran Turismo's logo for Gran Turismo 7, which I think looks brilliant. Now here, I think they're emphasizing just the worldwide nature of this game, how vast it's going to be, how many tracks we're going to have, how many different parts of, you know, of the world we're going to be at with different continents, with desert, with mountains, with the city. We're here then finishing off in our garage for the final part of the intro before we get into it. Here, just more and more cars, including the CLK GTR, one of my favorite cars of all time. GT mode is back. Hopefully the car wash is there. Everybody loves the car wash. We got deliveries. Great thing entered into, into Gran Turismo Sport. Listen to the sound. I think they've improved that as well. There's some scapes there. People like to take lots of photos, not for me personally, but if it's your thing, it's there for you. Second-hand car market, something that's back again. And just more and more cars, really. We're moving over to Japan now to show the high-speed ring. So the remastering of older tracks and then Le Mans. Tuning. I'm telling you, I'm going to have a 1,000 horsepower skyline before the first hour on this game is up, if I can do it. It's one of the most, well, one of the most repeated activities, I think that I did on the very first Gran Turismos. Again here, just showing a bit of the gameplay. Looks great. Notice down in the bottom left there by the wheels, how the state of the track is and how wet it is. So dynamic racing lines could be pretty cool. The Pennzoil Nismo GTR as well. Another absolute classic back for this game. And then they just go on really to show you the absolute array of cars that are going to be at our disposal in Gran Turismo 7. Even those things, I don't want them, but they're pretty cool to have. This potentially special stage, Route 5, Route 11, who knows? And then it finishes with dynamic rain at Le Mans and then available March 4th, 2022. To be honest, that date cannot come soon enough. What a trailer. So, what did you think? Hopefully, and probably, you've already seen that before, and we could analyze it to death. But as I said at the start of the video, I'm gonna pull out five things that I really, really like and I am most looking forward to 
about Gran Turismo 7. And we're going to start with number one, which is the fact that we have a release date at all. Polyphony, how do I put this politely, aren't great with comms. Let's be honest, it's been a bugbear of mine and many others for a long, long time. And to finally put their name to a date and it not be a million miles away, especially with COVID and everything else that's going on, I am really, really happy about that. It gives us some light at the end of the tunnel because Gran Turismo Sport isn't exactly fresh anymore after four years. And we've got six short months until the new game. Point number two, dynamic weather. So not just dynamic day night, which we'll talk about later, but dynamic weather. So this is a whole new kettle of fish. And I don't know any game that does it, well, that I play that does it particularly well or is even a feature at all. So to have a track going from dry then to wet is going to be absolutely incredible. As I pointed out in the trailer, if you look by the tyres on the left hand side, you'll see almost like a precipitation level or track state, basically. So potentially we're going to have to go from dry to intermediate to wets to wets to intermediate to dry and all of these different things. It's just going to add an extra dynamic rather than the, quite frankly, boring dry that we have at the moment or full wet that we've got on Gran Turismo Sport on one, maybe two tracks. So dynamic weather is going to be something that's going to be absolutely incredible if they get it right. I mean, fair play to them for introducing it at all. And I cannot wait to get stuck into that because that's going to sort the men from the boys. Now, number three, sticking with the dynamic theme, something that if you watch my channel a lot, you'll be familiar with through iRacing, but the day night transition, I cannot tell you how amazing that is. So what that also tells us on an underlying level is unless they speed it up crazily, can we finally potentially be looking at having endurance races on Gran Turismo? Wow, that would be that would be something I would be very, very interested in. So the way that Gran Turismo as well do their graphics, it's going to look great. It's the best thing about Gran Turismo, really, or one of the top things is how this game looks. And day-night transition, wet-dry transition, could you imagine some of the combinations that we're going to see? So that's the third thing that I am really, really excited about. Number four, penultimate one now. It's just the amount of cars that we see. And not just any cars these are nostalgic cars and a few that you know a few that come to mind firstly we saw the castrol supra then we saw the mercedes clk gtr and then we saw the uh, penzoil nismo and just such nostalgia uh these cars were my youth to be quite honest with you um, I absolutely love them. I cannot wait to play them in this game. And whilst we got a few funky things like that army truck uh, and a few crazy concepts, I'm really, really encouraged as a GT racer. That's what I like racing, racing cars, as most of us do. I just think it could be great. If that's anything to go by and the variety of cars, we saw the Lambo as well. And we saw a couple of other cars in there as well. If you if you look really, really closely, I think we saw a Ford GT race car too. So hopefully there's plenty on show there, plenty of variety. Hopefully they get the bop right so we can have a really good variety of cars and a good usage really of those cars, a wide span of usage. Because as we know, we just don't want a meta car. We don't want a meta car. Let's get that variety going. And I'm really, really optimistic, as I keep saying, that this could be great and then finally number five i think everybody can agree the original tracks coming back um you know we're seeing trial mountain high speed ring i'm sure i saw apricot hill as well um just yeah getting back out on those after so long is just going to be incredible 
Um, I hope also they sort stuff out with some of the real world tracks. I mean, there was a bit of shortage, a uh, bit of a shortage of them in Gran Turismo Sport, obviously for licensing fees and all this sort of stuff. But I'm hoping with the influx of money that they're going to get, well, they're going to get my money, that's for sure. And I'm sure yours, if you're watching this video as well, that they invest some of that money or have preempted it and invested some of that money and getting some of the licenses of some of the big tracks that were missing for too long in Gran Turismo Sports. But they were my top five things that I am looking forward most to in Gran Turismo 7. Let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of the things I picked out as my five favorite things. Let me know yours as well, what you're most looking forward to. And to be honest, guys, this has really, really motivated me again. As I say, I didn't see a light at the end of the tunnel, but we've only got six short months until Gran Turismo 7 is upon us. And yeah, I cannot wait. It's going to go so quickly. It's going to be here before we know it. And that is going to be the end of this little video, guys. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to watch similar content such as this. Gran Turismo Sport on the lead up to Gran Turismo 7. And then a steady, steady helping of Gran Turismo 7 when it finally arrives. But that's going to be the end of the video, guys. Until the next one, see you later. Cheers.